This call is now being recorded. Welcome to This Call is Now Being Recorded with your host, Samson Williams. I feel like I have Mike on the line. Mike, are you on the line today? Yes, I am. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Mike, I know you're calling about something for the space economy, and so we're going to just jump right into it. It's the easiest podcast on the planet because I just recorded our phone call. So what are we talking about for space economy, specifically about spaceports? Yes, and I think we were talking a lot about uh, referring to uh, Kansas spaceport down in Georgia, which has been an ongoing saga, to say the least, for uh, over the past couple of years. Yeah, tell, tell the audience a little bit why why a spaceport first, and then why in Georgia? Well, spaceports are basically set up to allow non what we call I call non governmentals, which are which are basically private entities to launch uh, space missions from, and in some cases even to uh, accommodate reentries of of these non governmental missions. Um, all these these spaceports are licensed by the Federal Aviation Administration, and of course. To get that license, they have to go. They have to go through a process, including an environmental review. Now there are there are about 13 licensed spaceports here in the U.S. presently. Um, actually, I think it's 14 now that uh, Georgia received Kansas spaceport. In Georgia re- received its license back in December. Uh, but the whole idea is this is this is a license process that's overseen by the government, and uh, it's something that is. Critical, it's critical infrastructure for the uh, for uh, commercial space activities in the future. A hundred percent. I love where you're going for our audience. Just to be clear, to help paint that visual of a spaceport, uh, seaports are where ships come in and dock, unload their cargo. Airports, that's where planes take off horizontally, big runways. At spaceports, rockets take off vertically. Super important to know that somewhere around 2020, uh, SpaceX did amazing things where they demonstrated that they could reuse rockets. That vertical takeoff and landing is super important to the futures of spaceports. So, Mike, give us a little bit of background on what's happening down at Spaceport uh, in Georgia. What's the name again for the Spaceport in Georgia? It's, it's Kansas Spaceport. And this, this idea has been – this has been in progress for, I think, I think believe well, – four or five years right now, and it all started with the idea of, of Georgia. The, the Georgia uh, Congress or the legislature, they passed a bill called, called the uh, Georgia Space Spaceflight uh, Bill, and basically what that did is it, it created a, a good legal, a, a, how do you say, a legal environment in terms of liability that would be, that would be accommodate space, commercial space or non-governmental activities in the state of Georgia. That passed the Jet Legislature, and it was signed into law, and it currently is Georgia state law. And that was kind of the foundation for Camden Spaceport. Now, the whole Camden Spaceport is being based is being considered for this area within a, uh, you know, with, a, with an area that's a lot of wetlands and other natural areas, and actually borders on some federal uh, land as well that is that is protected that, as for in terms of conservation. So they went and there was originally they had a launch comp, uh, company that was going to uh, work out of that a launch tenant, but that tenant that that company went out of business before it actually launched <clears throat> launched the vehicle out of there. Still, through, throughout this whole process, uh, Camden, Camden basically created a spaceport authority through through law through their legislature, and they basically were the focal point of getting an FAA approval and getting a license to uh, an operator license for the spaceport. And they, they actually succeeded in doing that in December. And again, this was a very long process. It was very fraught with a lot of litigation and a lot of controversy. And even though they have the license now, there's still a lot of controversy. You know, that's very interesting. And so what I really take away from this is, A, there's 14 spaceports in America. And I'm just going to go out on the limb and say that's 14 more. That's 140% growth over the last 10 years, um, meaning the number of spaceports that are coming online are, are relatively speaking, quickly increasing. Uh, number two, Georgia did a very interesting thing in the movie business. If you, I don't know if you know this. But they have a lot of films that are filmed in Georgia mm-hmm. uh, versus Hollywood. 
And that was mm-hmm. a policy legislative thing on the part of Georgia to get the film industry to Georgia. Mm-hmm. And so for everyone who's down in Florida, hanging around Cape Canaveral, Georgia has decided that what they did in the movie industry, a policy decision. It looks like they're going to do for the space economy and the space industry by recruiting, by setting up uh, Space Force Camden there in Georgia uh, to help bring some of the space economy businesses into Georgia. And I feel like that's a big move. That's a big, I think that's a strategic move. Yeah, it, it is. A lot of states jumping onto it. But in Georgia's case, they have a lot of problems right now. This has been um, challenged by by local by local by local community. Uh, it's been challenged by environmental groups um, right through all throughout the process. The FAA has been sued at least uh, once during the uh, environmental review, and there's actually still a, a lawsuit against uh, Camden County by an by a environmental group in state court there relating to the environmental review. But now if there's a license, basically what the um, the environmental group has taken the FAA back to court is trying to get the license revoked. And um, all this is kind of in the shadows of the fact that we have this piece of property here that's owned by Union Carbide that is supposed to be sold to it. But back in back in March, uh, a referendum was held about the spaceport, and the community said, no, we don't want it here. Now, right now, can't the, uh, the, the Camden Authority that's in charge of the spaceport is basically is in state court trying to invalidate that referendum saying they don't have the authority to stop this but union carbide is saying look we don't we're not going to sell you the property and that that's an issue because under the license that the FAA issued, issued them unless unless the uh, space authority can actually come up with a with a acceptable piece of property to build a spaceport on the the, the uh, license will not vest in other words it will not become back valid or active so there's a lot going on right now, and in fact, I guess recently the, uh, the the spaceport authority is actually going to sue Union Carbide to make them abide by the terms of the contract to sell them the property. So it's a huge mess right now, and there's a lot of litigation, and a lot of this revolves around environment uh, environmental interests. Uh, Michael, you really focused, uh, you really honed my uh, focus about what opportunities the space account, what opportunities for lawyers lie within the space economy. And so just as the good folks of Georgia figure out how to get their spaceport, rather rather if they want a spaceport, then how to figure out uh, how to get it up and running, it's going to be a very interesting space, not only for, quote, unquote, astronauts, engineers, but also for lawyers. So, Michael, as we wrap up, this call is now being recorded uh, with your host, Samson Williams, as I love to talk about all things related to space and the space economy. Tell our listeners, where can they find you uh, on social if they want to continue to follow you or learn more about what you're doing for space and law? Well, I'm on LinkedIn, Michael Listener. You can you can uh, look me up there and ask to join, uh, follow me there. Uh, I am also I have a website www.spacelawsolutions.com, and that is that is a website for my company, my 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 consultation firm that I, that I run, and it's related all to uh, space activities and regulations and things like that. And if you want to, I also have a brief, uh, quarterly briefing letter that I do called the Pressy, which actually, de- you know, focuses on matters related to space. And again, if you go to my website, spacelawsolutions.com, you can learn how to become a subscriber to my briefing letter as well. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. We'll have to have you back on for another conversation on another hot topic. But in the meantime, uh, thanks for listening. Don't forget to visit uh, Michael if you're in the need of a space lawyer at spacelawsolutions.com. And, Michael, uh, we will see you in the next orbit. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.